Today, feminism is increasingly focusing on a broader range of perspectives, including people oppressed by gender norms like women, non-binary and transgender persons. Now, where did all this begin? In 1968, Martha Wienerlea published an article in the New York Times called The Second Feminist Wave. This is when the metaphor of waves began. It represents the various surges of feminism. This new terminology quickly spread and became the popular way to define feminism. So, in this feminist archive video, let us talk about the first wave of feminism. The first wave of feminism generally refers to the 19th and early 20th century in the Western world. This phase revolved largely around gaining basic legal rights for women that today we cannot imagine most of our lived reality without. Politics and business were completely dominated by powerful men who didn't consider women capable enough to be a threat. Women were confined to their households and didn't retain any control there as well. Unmarried women were seen as a property of their fathers and married women as a property of their husbands. They didn't have the ability to file a divorce or be granted custody of their children. Marital rape as a concept was unheard of. Women who did work held low positions, such as secretaries, and worked largely in factories managed and controlled by men. They also had no right to vote in elections. The first wave officially began with the signing of the Declaration of Sentiments at the Seneca Falls Convention, which is the first ever women's rights convention. The convention was created when Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Lucretia Mott were denied seating at the 1840 World Anti-Slavery Convention in London. Many abolitionists were also feminists, and thus the anti-slavery movement fueled the first wave and vice versa. With the formation of the American Equal Rights Association in 1866, the right of women to vote in elections became the goal. When this organization collapsed, the National Women Suffrage Association was formed in the early 1869. The American Women Suffrage Association formed later that year. The solely female-led NWSA had a broad program and wanted to work towards the overall upliftment of women in society. Whereas the AWSC focused on gaining the essential right to vote, this divide led to a split in the movement. As the methods of the two bodies grew more alike over the years, they eventually merged into the National American Women Suffrage Association. In 1869, Wyoming became the first state to grant suffrage to women. In 1916, the National Women's Party was formed by young feminist Alice Paul. She aimed to achieve suffrage by working towards a constitutional amendment instead of state amendments. Inspired by British militant suffragists, the party staged demonstrations outside the White House and continued their campaign through the World War. Members were arrested, went on hunger strikes, carried out picketing and used publicity to generate pressure on the Wilson administration in favor of suffrage. While they tried to refocus attention on the movement during the World War, the president of NAWSA supported the US war effort. This positioning NAWSA as a patriotic organization. This became useful when lobbying in favor of the 19th amendment and its ratification by all states. The amendment declared, "The right of citizens of the United States to vote shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of sex." Despite resistance from the Southern Democrats, it passed in the Senate on 4 June 1919 and was ratified last by Tennessee on 18 August 1920. The first wave of feminists amended with this amendment. This in itself shows the selective and exclusive nature of the movement. Women of color were still practically subdued and the victory was only for white women. In the first wave, marginalized black women faced discrimination based on race as well as gender. While the NWSA initially worked towards the suffrage for both white and black women, with the entry of younger feminists into the organization, the goal became white-centric. With this increase in exclusion, black women formed separate organizations to work towards black suffrage. The National Association for Colored Women was founded in 1896, and the Alpha Suffrage Club, founded in 1913, was some of the first bodies which fought for black suffrage. Another group whose contributions are ignored is the Asian community in the U.S. at the time. 
foreign-born nations were not allowed to become U.S. citizens, irrespective of how long they had resided in the U.S. and thus couldn't vote. So, to conclude, even though the first wave of feminism was powerful, it was definitely not intersectional. While the first wave lacked inclusivity, it gave the world some of the most dedicated feminists like Susan B. Anthony and Sojourner Truth. Securing the right to vote for women allowed them to officially be recognized as active citizens who could vote on issues that concern women's rights and which would be beneficial for future decisions.